I'm Abby Schreiber, the executive editor of Paper Magazine, and it's a pleasure to be here to hear some music by Ingrid Andres. Um, we're here uh, to hear more from Ingrid about her songwriting process, her experience as a country artist who is not letting the genre box her in and is exploring lots of ways that country can be married with other styles and sounds. And of course, what we can uh, expect from the record. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Ingrid. Hello, hi. I love this outfit, first of all. Thank you. Dressed up just for you. So cute. Very uh, on, on theme of our, of our stage. <laughs> can you tell I love plants? I love it. Do you have a lot of plants at home? Um, I, they start off being there, and then they die. So. Well, it's so, you know, life of a musician on the road a lot. Yes. If yeah. I was home, then they would be alive, but they are not. So this is nice. Very nice. Live plants. I love it. So tell us a little bit more about, let's sort of start at the beginning. When you were growing up, when did you first realize that you felt a real connection with music and making music and that, in fact, you were good at it and it might be something you would want to pursue more seriously? Um, I think music was always a hobby for me growing up because I didn't have people around me who pursued music as a career. Um, so I'll just keep playing piano and singing on my own. Um, and it wasn't until I realized that you could actually be a musician for your job um, then I was just like, oh, well, I want to do this then forever. I don't want to go to an, a real college. I'd rather go to music college. And I don't want to have to take any more classes on things that I don't care about. And growing up, what were some of the artists or who were some of the artists and uh, records and CDs, I guess, for us? <laughs> CDs. MP3s, iPods. Um, what, did, what did you listen to growing up? Well, my parents were very conservative so I started off listening to pretty much just Christian music. And so I would get my friends to burn CDs for me, just of like whatever they were listening to. And um, that's how I started getting exposed to all these different types of music. Like it was, it was country, it was like Garth Brooks and the Dixie Chicks, but it was also Eminem um, and Missy Elliott. Uh, and then I went through a metal phase, Metallica, Slipknot, you know, punk rock. All the classics. Yep. Like, I just went through, I made my way through all of it because at that point I was just so happy to not be listening to Christian music. And even though, like, some of it's really amazing, but it gets old real fast, you know? And I feel like just being eager to hear all these different types of songwriting and music styles, I never really picked a favorite. It was always just, you know about the, the artist and if I could feel the emotion that they had when they wrote the song or just singing it. Um, I loved Whitney Houston. She was one of my favorites. My go-to karaoke songs, Want to Dance with Somebody, for better or for worse. It's a good one. It's a, it's a tough one, for sure. Most people leave the bar being like, ooh, tough. Oh, I would say I feel like probably people don't want to go up after you, after you. Not after do I drink a little one. bit. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's like sad Whitney Houston. So, um, but I just, yeah, I never really picked like a favorite artist growing up. I just loved music in general. And so I feel like that's kind of helped um, kind of mold my sound because I just like good music. Like it's hard for me to really. Um, label music based on genres. It's just to me, I'm like, do I like it or do I not? And that's it. Fair enough. Well, first of all, congratulations on Ladylike. Thank you. Yes, it's thank Very you. exciting. How are you feeling? Just so great. Yeah. Happy that it's out. And um, a lot of the songs were written over a period of time. I feel like it's just, it's a nice chapter of my life that I can gift to the world being like, and here were all of my thoughts at this point in my life. And um, yeah, it's just nice to get the stories out there. That's really what I care about. And for those watching who haven't yet had the chance to stream it, which you absolutely should, what can you share 
with all of us about the album and some of the ideas and things you were thinking about when you were writing and recording? Um, I think a lot of the songs were written not thinking that it was going towards an album. It was just about what I was feeling that day or that moment. And then, you know, the compilation of the songs on the record um, are basically just capturing feelings that I've had over the past year and um, where I stand as far as like how I view love or relationships or being a woman or... And those things could totally change as I get older because I feel like, you know, if you are a human being, it is normal to change. Of course. Yes, when you get older. But for now, this is who I am. And kind of the stories, a lot of them are emotional. Surprise. I'm very, I lo- I'm a sucker for a sad song. And um, a lot of them are just ways of at which I'm analyzing emotions and how I process them. So it's just very much the stories that I tell in the album are very much things that have either happened to me or to my friends or people that are close to me. It's all very personal. I was sharing with everyone here earlier how much both your song really resonated with me and with um, the team over at Paper when we heard it when you came by our office um, about a year ago. So... Tell us a bit more about writing that song and some of the things you were hoping to express in it or things you were thinking about while you were working on it. Yeah, absolutely. That song actually started, it was on a day that I honestly didn't know what I was going to write about because me personally, I wasn't going through anything super emotionally charging or one way or the other. And so that's when I was like, okay, well, what are my friends going through? What have we been talking about the past few days? And they um, were on Bumble, and I, you know, would go onto their accounts with them and be like, "Oh, who's this?" And like, "Oh, do we like them?" And I would kind of see their conversations that they would have back and forth with these people that they hadn't met yet, and it was just so interesting to me, like that human emotion that goes into, you know, meeting people over you know, dating apps, it's so different than meeting somebody in real life, but that's kind of the, the generation we live in now. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it's, it was interesting to see how people talk to each other over text than they would in real life. Like half the stuff these people were saying, I was like, would you actually say that in real life? Cause I feel like you wouldn't. Um, so it was really just channeling my friend's frustration because they're obviously looking for a deep and meaningful relationship, which I think we all deep down want, even though casually dating is like the popular thing to do now, which I'm totally here for, by the way. But um, I think deep down, we really want to end up with somebody who understands us. And the best way that happens is with solid communication and being straightforward. And for some reason, we're so bad at doing that. And um, I just wanted to write something to encourage my friends that it's okay to stand up for what you want in a relationship because we deserve the best from everybody. Um, And yeah, so both was just me venting what my friends had been frustrated about, which is guys showing interest and then not texting them back. It's like, why can't the guy just tell her that he doesn't want to go out? Like, why do you have to ghost somebody? Like, it's just this whole psychology I just don't understand. I don't understand people. That's why I stay in my house all the time. (laughs) Just kidding, but... It's just, it's an interesting time in the dating world for our generation. And so I just wanted to speak into that and let people know that you can just say whatever you want in in a respectful way, of course. What have been, over the course of your career, or even just your own life, personal life, friendships, where you've gotten advice from people that maybe was bad advice and did you did you listen to it I feel like when you are broken up with I feel like you kind of will do anything to kind of fix whatever feeling you're having because you don't like it and it's uncomfortable and you just want to get rid of it as soon as possible so you go from or at least I go from not listening to anybody to tell me all of your remedies for heartbreak because I am here for it and I will do it now So that's what bad advice was inspired by. Um, I just was like, okay, I'll sure I'll drink an entire bottle of wine by myself and see how I feel. Sure. I'll make out with random people. It'll be great. And, uh, yeah, they just 
didn't ever really work. You know, it works for a, a second, and then you're just like, oh, man, what did I do? The namesake song on the album, Lady Like, really pushes back against a lot of the narrow stereotypes and expectations people often have for women, even today. Um, as, as an artist, as a female musician, as a country musician, have you found yourself encountering any of these expectations or feeling pressured to act a certain way, look a certain way, or sing, or you know, perform a certain way, um, or any, any experiences that have directly fueled the song? Um, I think I didn't really, I didn't really experience a lot of it before I became an artist, as far as like when I was a songwriter, I feel like I would just go into a room and, and demand the respect that I thought I deserved. And I feel like I was raised well in that fact to where my mom and dad never told me I could or couldn't do anything because I was a girl. Um, and I never really thought of being a girl as a disadvantage. You know, the song Lady Like, I feel like how I act sometimes in the country world, I feel like it sometimes people don't really understand it, which is why they attack it. Um, like me not wearing a bra, for example. They're very uncomfortable, and I don't feel like explaining that to a bunch of people, you know? You either know or you don't know, and if you wanna know about it, just ask me about it. But like, that really rubbed people the wrong way at first, and I didn't know why. I was just like, why, why does that bother you? And I think a lot of negativity that comes towards women is just people not understanding where we're coming from. And I think if people took more time to understand why women are maybe having a tougher time in country, then I don't think it would be um, such a heated topic. Rightly or wrongly, country often gets perceived or pegged as a very conservative genre. And you know, I think in many ways, it's often people conflating either their perceptions of supposed country music fans or you know the genre's respect for certain traditions and musical hallmarks and styles and its sort of long history in this country but you know at the same time for a long time there's always also been this parallel tradition within country music with the outlaw country scene and you have yeah. these really soul bearing rebellious especially female artists from Loretta Lynn to you know more recently, the Dixie Chicks, and now today with artists like you, like Casey Musgraves, Marin Morris, and others. You know, what do you make of the way country is perceived by the broader, you know, mainstream public? I don't want to provoke anything other than just thoughts of like, and ask questions of like, is this what we believe in as a country? Do we all agree or disagree on this? Like, it's more to just start a conversation. I. I think at this point in my career, I'm not trying to lead a rebellion because I'm just doing whatever I want to do. And if people like it, that's awesome. But I do think I gravitate towards the country genre because it has been historically a very, um, it's been a controversial genre, which is so funny now that we're at this place where everybody views country as being so conservative. And it's just so interesting how time changes that perspective based on where we're at as a country. And I, I think country is the only genre left right now where you can lyrically craft something to really touch the hearts of people around the world. And I think this next stage of country will go back to being kind of what it stood for in the first place, which was for the people, not just for select people. And I think there are a lot of things happening in our country right now that need to be talked about that country could really help with. And so I'm really hoping that some of us can do that in this lovely music world of ours. So your music, you know, you're, you're rooted in many ways in country music traditions, and yet your music really does transcend lots of different genres. So I'm curious to, to kind of hear more from you about you know your thoughts on where country especially is heading as as more and more young artists are kind of coming up through the scene in Nashville coming up through you know certain traditions and hallmarks of country music but are starting to explore other sounds or collaborations or expanding you know what we think of as both a country music song and a country music artist mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think it's a really exciting time for country music. I know a lot of people would fight me on that because there are a lot of new artists coming in and really adding new sounds and new ways of telling a story that is, you know, sometimes doesn't go over well with people. But I feel like, to me, country music, why I got into it was because of the storytelling and the real emotion of somebody telling a story that we can all relate to in some way. Like, I can't really relate to Cardi B's songs most of the time. As much as I'd like to. I think I do, deep down. Um, but there's something with country where there's a story for everybody. And even if you're not, you've never lived on a farm or you've never lassoed a horse or whatever, I feel like you still get that emotion from the stories that people tell in country music because it just comes from a real place of family and where you grew up and not forgetting that and values and morals. And to me, country is about singing about the country you live in, what's happening in the country now. Country music is always paralleled whatever's happening in society, at least up till recently, I feel. And so to me, country is whatever we are as a country. And I think people coming into the genre and expanding it is actually helpful because it's making it more relevant to who we are as a society now. Um, and we shouldn't be afraid of of new sounds and new people coming into the genre because that's just who we are as a country and we're forever going to be changing and not saying that the way country was before is is right or wrong it's just what we were as a country before and now it's we're growing and it's a beautiful thing thank you so much for spending a minute chatting yes, and of course. without further ado we will get to hear you perform some of the songs off of your new album ladylike Woo! Thank you.